28th, we have a quorum. Uh, Mr. Wiesar, Mrs. Skrull, Mr. Rosenthal, myself, Bernard Parks is chair. Before we get started, we have some guests from Korea. Christine, could you stand and introduce our guests and what province they're from? Thank you very much for visiting. We just had a brief meeting in which, uh, in a very short time, trying to explain to them uh, our one-year odyssey as we go through the budget process and what it means and what this committee does on a routine basis. And so uh, they're going to uh, stay with us as much as they can and possibly be available after the meeting to uh, ask additional questions. Uh, uh, let me ask my colleagues if we can go through the agenda. Uh, on consent items, we have items one and two in closed session. Consent items, if we could uh, continue number four at the request of the CAO, and number 10, uh, we have a request from CD2 to receive and file. So our consent cal calendar would be three, uh, five, six, and 10, with a continuance on four. Uh, that would three, five. three, five, six, and 10 on consent. And on 10 would be receive and file, continuance on four. And on item three, if we could ask the clerk just for their report, would they determine on that question about this, the uh, uh, having an assistant general manager, if they would just put uh, the narrative whether all five of the Rec and Park superintendent positions are currently filled. We can add that. And then uh, we will come back after closed session for seven and we'll, and we'll handle eight and nine together. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to reconvene the regular meeting, the budget and finance. Uh, we have uh, our quorum. Uh, Mr. Weezar stepped out for a second, but we'll be back. Mr. Smith has joined us since we were here earlier. So uh, we can go to item. Uh, Actually, we need to, uh, we, there's a change to item number six, and I think CLA has those proposed changes. If we could take that item back up. Um, that's number the six. item six. This is the motion relative to sale of surplus radio equipment to the California Emergency Mobile Patrol. Okay. Mr. Chair, William Morales, CLA. Uh, there was a technical correction I wanted to make to the motion to match the preambulatory language. In fact, it's 25 of each of the radios, not one. And um, Mr. Torres has confirmed that the equipment is available. Um, it's been declared a surplus, and this all meets council policy, so we'd recommend approval. There's a total of 25? 25. 25 each, so a total of 75. So 75. fiscal impact will be $75. Okay, instead of three. thank you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that ought to solve the mayor's problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just we'll a few more zeros on the back of that. We'll be okay. Here. We'll move that item with that technical correction. <laughs> okay. Item number seven, which is a CEO report relative to prior year encumbrances and the reserve fund loans. Liz Lee is here from our office. Elizabeth Lee of the Office of the CAO. The report before you provides the results of a review of prior year encumbrances that are recommended to revert to the reserve fund, status of reserve fund loan repayments, and overview of current practices of providing reserve fund loans to departments. Our office is recommending to revert uh, release 
10.4 million of prior year encumbered funds and to revert a total of 12.4 million to the reserve fund. As a policy, we, re we release all encumbrances through 2004, 05, and older, with some exceptions, being that encumbrances could only be kept if orders for goods have been placed or delivered, or if billing needs to be resolved or reconciled. We would also like to review further 2005-06 and 2006-07 encumbrances and ask that council instruct departments to report back to the, C to the CAO's office. This report also includes a status of um, reserve fund loan repayments. At this time, of the loans on the books as of November 2007, 23.1 million. We expect 11.4 million will be repaid by the end of the year. In general, there are two types of reserve fund loans, primarily grant-related and unfunded expenditures. Uh, the report provides an overview of the process for providing reserve fund loans to front fund and cash flow departments uh, for grants that are subject to approval and awarded on an annual basis. The CAO rec recommends that prior to approval of a reserve fund loan, that we provide a fund finding that a department does not have available appropriations to absorb the grant expenses. In addition, we recommend that departments submit expenses on a quarterly basis or as soon as allowed by the grantor to expedite uh, loan repayment. To minimize reserve fund loans tied to <coughs> unfunded expenditures at year end, the CAO also recommends that the controller and the CAO develop and implement a working procedure to assist departments and special funds to account for expenditure and to repay the loans as soon as possible. Hopefully this will address problems of billing delays, disallowed costs, reimbursements inadvertently made to the general fund, or lack of or incorrect doc documentation, and avoid inaccurate estimates of year-end costs. Um, I'm here to answer any questions you may have. L let me ask you, could you give us an idea of what are some of the expenditures that we uh, have unencumbered, and is there a pattern that we determine through the departments of those that may have been in place that uh, the money was not spent? Well, these are mainly for residuals, uh, for let's say contracts that we've already paid a certain amount for and these contracts have uh, completely fulfilled all the requirements and we've made the last payments and there are some left over and this goes for uh, office and admin expenses as well. And then what's the procedure you're going to put in place to, so we do not have this level of funds allocated that uh, we have to go retrospectively to, to research them? The procedure we're uh, thinking of uh, putting together a working procedure to uh, assist departments and special fund administrator uh, is a working procedure to report expenses and document expenses for the special fund and make sure that these are eligible costs and we want the process to be done on a monthly basis or quarterly basis so that we could uh, reduce unfunded expenditures at year end. Okay. Now, is that a procedure that you're going to put in place or that you're contemplating or is that in place now? The control, we're, we're hoping that we, the controller and the CAO, could implement that and develop that. Okay. okay. And then let me just ask on a clerical issue. On, on attachment three, we articulate that as of the Second financial status report that there's 176 million in the uh, in the reserve fund, and it says it specifically it does not include the 22 million that we moved to the reserve fund. <coughs> but then, on this report, we calculate the 23 million that's coming out of the actions by the C CAO, and I'm just wondering why did we exclude? the actions of the second financial status? Uh, we did exclude it, but it's just that um, as of November 30th, it wasn't booked in the reserve fund loans. Mm -hmm. And this chart in attachment three actually provides uh, detail of what's in the reserve fund right now. Okay. But now and we will correct that because it's already uh, reflected. Okay. Let me ask you, this, what, what would the reserve fund be at this time? Is that the, <coughs> is that 
22 million more than the report Yes, uh, at this time it is okay. 22 million more. Okay. If you could ensure that the clerk gets those accurate figures because uh, it would give us uh, and also the breakdown between the emergency and the contingency. So when this report goes through, we'd have the, as accurate we'll, a number. Yeah. We'll provide an update of attachment three. Okay. And then um, the one thing I was going to ask on the reserve fund loan policy, uh, and I see where you made a couple of recommendations, uh, a finding that the department does not have the available funds. One of them, was there any consideration given to where the department should make that judgment at the time that they solicit the, the uh, grant or before they accept the grant so that we can encourage that those types of transactions should be done, if at all possible, without reserve fund loans? Uh, well, it will really have to depend on whether appropriations are available within the department's budget. I mean, because but should, these uh, grants are yeah. uh, awarded on that, an annual basis. Yeah. What I'm thinking is that whether as part of their evaluation of going for the loan, should they be making those judgments ahead of time versus waiting until they get the loan and then say, I've gotten the grant, now you, you got to give me $200,000. Uh, certainly, they should put that into consideration. Because okay. it would seem as though that may prompt whether we go after the grant if the first option is their budget versus the reserve fund, which everybody's relying on. Uh, well, certainly, they should look at okay. that if, aspect. If you could look at that as far as the, that policy. And then okay. on uh, page two of your report, you show a, gr a graph <coughs> that reflects there's about $6.5 million of loans that need to be researched. Is it possible for us to get back that research on that 6.5 within the next uh, 30 to 60 days so what? we'll know exactly how much uh, can be returned to us before June 30th? We'll do that, sir. We're actually going to uh, make another review, complete another review of all these um, uh, loans that need more further research. We haven't received definitive replies from departments, and we're constantly following up, sir. And then the last question I have is that, um, has the CAO made any progress of evaluating the controller's audit that dealt with the whole grant, the citywide grant process? We're actually in the process of looking at and trying to make some determinations uh, as far as where we want to go, um, you know, basically with the grant process. Now, was there a timeline placed on that when that report, when, did we do a motion or something to, to to move that, or how, how did we get that to you? You know, I don't recall. I think there was uh, some recommendations that came out of the audit. I know the, the mayor's office gave us some um, direction. Uh, I would not be surprised if there's a motion out there as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Great. Yes, I, whatever I did. you did. Okay. Did. okay. <laughs> let, let me ask that we, we move that report, but that uh, we ask for the updated information on the reserve fund that will take into account the uh, financial status report number two and the actions of this report uh, that also uh, that we get a report back on the changes in uh, procedures that will give the CAO uh, uh, a better understanding of or prevent departments from the practice in the future of unnecessarily encumbering funds so that we get a report back on that and then um, that we also get a report back on what the final determination on the reserve fund loan whether uh, we sh uh, in addition to the two recommend recommended instructions that we view whether a department must take into consideration their ability to front in uh, or to cash flow that grant before the acceptance and then if we have a report back in uh, 30 to 60 days on uh, page two the graph on the um, uh, loans that need further research if we can get a, a result of those and then uh, if we can also within the next 60 days get a report on the CAO status of reviewing the controllers audit on the grant process and as, 
sorry, I stepped mm -hmm. out for a moment, but um, uh, you know, we had found recently in the LAPD um, grant, uh, you know, found that they found 5.7 million, I think, in, mm -hmm. in that. Um, as part of your re review, going to also be able to cover uh, the fact of looking at those that um, have not been reimbursed back to the general fund. Um, yes, attachment tr three provides that detail. Because okay. right. I have this impression, and I know I know you're working on or this controller is doing the audit on all our special trust funds. Mm -hmm. You know, which I have a feeling as well. Some of those um, really should be going back to the general fund at some point. And, right. and no, we agree. We, we, the uh, special funds are somewhat um, more difficult to get a handle on because it's really, for many of these, it's up to the department to reconcile and report. And uh, sometimes having, um, getting that information is, is challenging. But certainly in, in PD's case, and there's quite a few others, we'd like to uh, get a red handle on that information. Yeah. Actually, the police uh, grant loans are all going to be mostly paid for by the year end. So they've uh, been able to reconcile and spend some time uh, the past six months looking at to, to look at the reserve fund loans. Yes. I mean, because the impetus, as I recall, for that 5.7 million was the fact that there wasn't funds available somewhere else and we were going to have to use, I don't know if it was reserve fund, I think it was reserve fund monies right. to do that. And based on the CAO, you know, saying we need to look differently is where they actually found it. Right. What would have happened if we'd had the money available um, and we wouldn't have even looked for it? So I think that's our... Yeah, exactly. Okay. So we'll move that item seven with those additional instructions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, it takes us to uh, item number eight, which is the city treasurer. Can we do eight and nine together? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, investment and cash management report for the month ending September 30th and October 31st, 2007. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, since we're last on the agenda, we'll try to make this short and sweet. Last for last. Uh, no, we've only been I, here an hour, though. Normally, we're here two or three hours. Yeah. <laughs> hey, take the time. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's been a volatile, volatile month, and I, uh, we thought it was important that we just tell you what has happened, what are the implications on the portfolio. And I'm introducing someone new. Um, to my left is Thomas Juarez, who's our senior investment officer reporting directly to Hal. Uh, we all work as a team, and he was instrumental in one of the mitigation uh, actions that we took today. As you're aware, the Feds in reduced interest rates about three-quarters of a percent off-cycle. It was the largest reduction they've ever done at one time in about 25 years. What is it now, by the way, now that they've reduced it? Three and a half percent. And we're looking at possibly on Wednesday another quarter to a half of a percent. <laughs> I'm, I'm floating on my refinance right now. <laughs> um, while this means we have less income coming in on the portfolio, it means the value of our portfolio has actually risen. I, I think over the weekend you may have heard about Societe General, Generale in France. We call it Sock Chin. And the trader who lost $7 billion, which is the amount of money about in our portfolio. And we did have po we did have positions in Sokchen, and and that's why uh, Thomas Wars is here. While we were confident that we were okay, why why take the risk? So Tom, sure. Um, as the city treasurer's mentioned, to mitigate any possible risk based on what happened last week with uh, Society General, um, we currently had well we had uh, approximately one and a half percent holding in the name, uh, thirty million of it was rolling off today and there was an additional hundred million that it was it was deemed appropriate to sell it um, at this time rather than um, take potential headline risk or actual real loss um, if this thing worsens with the name so we we ended up selling the piece this morning and we realized um, somewhere in the neighborhood of a six hundred thousand dollar gain and then how could you talk about the rest Sure, sure. As I, as I usually do, I just give a brief 
backdrop on the economy and the capital markets environment. Um, we're continuing to, to project slower uh, economic growth as measured by uh, GDP through 2008. Uh, the slower economic growth forecast is in large part due to uh, somewhat of a, of a slower expectation of consumer spending and, and business spending for that matter. And that's, of course, primarily due to the uh, demise of the housing market, uh, higher energy costs, and, and some other factors. Uh, the Federal Reserve, as uh, the Treasurer mentioned a moment ago, uh, did a surprise uh, Fed funds rate cut of 75 basis points, and there's a potential for uh, a 25 to 50 basis point cut this week. Uh, in fact, explain to us again what basis point is. I'm sorry. Explain to us again what uh, the basis. Basis a basis point is one one hundredth of one percent. So, uh, 25 uh, to 50 basis point rate cut expectation would be a one quarter to a one half percent further cut on the uh, Fed funds target rate. So right now we're at 3.5%, and the expectation is that we could go uh, as low as 3% uh, within the next week or so. So really, in, in terms of the uh, Treasurer's portfolio, it's, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, the benefit is, is that we have increased value of the Treasurer's pool with interest rates falling, the value of our bond investments increase. The dif disadvantage, however, is that the reinvestments that we do for the portfolio are at a lower, in a lower rate environment. So um, we're very cognizant about uh, the, the, the benefits and non-benefits of this very volatile changing rate environment. The, the, I might just go on to add that the Treasurer uh, continues to seek out securities that will help mitigate the negative lower rate environment and that includes our continuing purchase of callable securities, corporate securities, uh, and mortgage-related securities that help provide a higher yield uh, in this uh, lower yielding rate environment so that we can, in fact, achieve the uh, 07, 08 earnings goals that we've established. Okay. And I, I guess I would add, while we seek value, we have because of the volatility in the financial institutions market, that is not one area we're looking at. Uh, we've done some industrials. Is that mm -hmm. Yeah, we've industrial. purchased a lot of industrial paper. Uh, we have analytical tools that help us determine the inherent risk of purchasing certain sectors, such as finance oriented uh, corporate debt. And right now, our analysis indicates that the risk just does not justify the uh, very attractive credit spreads that can be obtained by buying uh, finance company uh, corporate paper. Okay. Let, let me just ask, uh, one of the items you mentioned in the report, we'll be going out for RFP for uh, on banking services. Explain what that means. Yes, that's for commercial banking services. That, that RFP was released last Friday. That's for the city's banking and checking accounts, uh, uh, wire transfers, uh, merchant card services, so general banking. Okay. Now, who are, who are we currently with? Uh, we actually primarily work with Bank of America and uh, as our primary banker. Uh, some work to U.S. Bank, but the city as a whole deals with pretty much every major bank in the country. Okay. Can I ask a related question? That Are there... Um, I know we've talked about this before, encouraging local banks, you know, supporting some of those are locally based here. What kind of priorities or preference or encouragement uh, is going to happen on this when you look at the responses to the RFP? Well, the, in that way, we, that, that's a bigger challenge. All of the smaller banks that we currently do business with under the CDARS program will receive a copy of the RFP. But the reality is a lot of them just aren't big enough to handle our volumes. Uh, so that's why we've tried to carve out uh, pieces. pieces that they could uh, be successful at. Uh, but yeah, I was going to ask a follow-up on that one, too. Is it how many – I know you've – uh, sent about 10 letters out to minority banks locally, and then how many have taken advantage of uh, that uh, offer? Four so far, but we are looking to sign up the next six at the February 7th meeting. Okay. Uh, though, but, and these are the final six that actually are members of this promontory network. But what we've done uh, to pr increase the participation of local banks, we've invited banks that are not members. 
uh, and we've invited to the same meeting uh, Office of the Comptroller, um, Federal Reserve, and Promontory Network to get these banks signed up. So as they get signed up, then we can expand the program. Okay. And then let me ask you, was there any consideration of going out for an RFI to search for these different products in the banking industry before we went out for the RFP? No, there wasn't. Because of our size, we generally, well, the banks generally have similar products. Um, and we've been doing this a really long time. We did include a couple of banks that, while their size is right, we, you know, we're going to give them opportunity even though they're, they don't have many locations. Uh, more and more, the banking industry is going toward technology versus brick and mortar. So that's going to be a focus of our evaluation as we go forward. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, bondage sounds like it's, it's helped us. Yes, if you would look at the October report on page 7, yeah. we told you that we come back when we had were able to justify our existence and that bond edge we could make t at least $10 million and we passed that threshold in December. And is there, um, you know, other ways to apply it to city processes that would save us additional dollars? I, I think so. One of the things that we had talked about, um, because the, the city's treasurer's pool has a double, a uh, triple A rating from both uh, major rating agencies, is perhaps we can manage the monies perhaps of the pension funds, their cash monies, and use these same tools to generate general fund income. Uh, that, that's one thing that we have looked at. Uh, can we ask you to come back with a report specifically on, that, on, on Bond Edge and what recommendations you might have for other city processes um, Certainly. that would be impacted by that? Um, because you had such great ideas last week, some of which I was able to introduce, hopefully for us to see accepted by the city. So, yeah, I might, I might just say that Bondage has been a wonderful tool. It allows us to uh, manage financial risk in a very sophisticated way. And uh, not only are we able to do it for the treasurer's pool, but I think there's opportunities to do it uh, for other pools of assets as well. Thank you very much. We'll move items eight and nine uh, with that uh, request from the uh, from Ms. Grewell uh, to add on that report back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, you're right. It's a heartbeat. Thank you. have my mustache. Right. What's he say? Yeah. What? What's he say? Meeting, we should say meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes.